Dear ones, this meditation has been designed to help you heal the negative programs that have been seeded into your virgin subconscious mind. When you were a little one, you were innocent, you were fragile and new. It wasn't your fault that the people around you were mentally ill, were alcoholics, were unkind, were uncruel. It's not your fault. They labeled you, mocked you, minimized you, compared you to others. It's not your fault. Perhaps they blamed you for all of their problems. It's not your fault. They had affairs or were depressed. It's not your fault that their parents were alcoholics, neglectful, cruel, abandoned them. You are not responsible for your parents' pain. You were never responsible for your parents' pain. In this meditation, we will be addressing some of these ideas. And as you get quiet and settle in, your mind will begin to accept these news ideas. The more you listen to these meditations, the quicker you heal. It will take a minimum of six weeks of programming or reprogramming the mind before your subconscious mind will begin to accept and also begin running from these new programs and these new ideas. Dear one, find a comfortable place to sit or to lie down. It's quite all right if you drift to sleep during this meditation. Your mind never stops receiving information. So don't worry about attaching to the ideas that you hear. So find that comfortable spot. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale gently. And again, dear one, breathe in and exhale. Bring your awareness into your body. Relax the muscles around your eyes. Relax your forehead. Relax the muscles around your mouth. Dear one, relax your shoulders. Let them sink, 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 sink. Notice the rhythmic breathing. Notice the rhythms of your breathing. Observe how your chest rises and falls all on its own. Divine, magically tied to the earth 
in the moon. Notice how your heart beats of its own will, of its own intelligence. Know that your body is doing exactly what it needs to do to support you here on earth, outside of your conscious awareness, your body, your divinity has been with you the entire time. Your body has one agenda and that is to house the divine spirit being that you are until you awaken to the reality of your true self. We will now begin reprogramming the mind. As you listen to these new ideas, it will not be uncommon for you to experience goosebumps and chills. This is resonance. What I mean by that is when you hear a thought or an idea and it strikes a chord with you, with the, some aspect of you, on a cellular level, you will know. You will know that some sense of healing has taken place by the way that you feel. Goosebumps, the chills, that's resonance. Your cells are hearing something that matters to them, that makes sense to them, and the manifestation of that resonance is the physical way you feel. On the journey to recovery, we begin to understand that the key to healing is paying attention to how we feel. Our parents were wrong. They taught us that our feelings don't matter, but they do. The way our body feels is everything. The cues, the signals, the goosebumps, the chills. Those are signals that our body is healing, that our body is hearing something, that our soul is recognizing something. That's right. That's true for our soul. When we feel knots, in our stomach, when we feel tightness in our chest, when we feel panic in our minds, when we feel stuck, when we experience brain fog, confusion, depression, nervousness, when our bodies shake and shiver. These are signs that we're out of alignment. It's the opposite of resonance, it's dissonance. Our spirit, our innate self, is not hearing or receiving information that is in alignment with its greater purpose. And all those pangs in our stomach and all that confusion were signals 
there were signs that something was wrong. We weren't crazy when we were children. Our little bellies, our tears, and our terror made sense. Our spirits knew, but our minds were taught to not pay attention to how we feel. Our minds, our virgin minds were corrupted by those around us. These teachings have not been created for the purpose of blaming those around us, but they have been created to help us make sense of why we have always felt the way we have felt. It is our divine right to come here, to question, to turn over every rock. We have the right to know what happened to us and why. We have the right to know why we are codependent. We have the right to know why we attract narcissistic people, narcissistic spouses, self-absorbed friends. We have a right to understand our depression, our anxiety, our fear. We have a right to understand who we are and what has happened to us and why. We have that right. And on this journey we discover that it was never us. We were never unworthy. We were always enough. We discover that we were divine and that our brains were hijacked by dysfunction. And like a computer that has been exposed to a virus it's not the computer's fault it's been exposed to a virus when it crashes when it slows down when it freezes when it gets stuck when it can't perform it's not our fault that we feel stuck can't perform, can't do what we need to do, or do what we want to do. It's not our fault that we've been infected with a virus that has hijacked our subconscious mind, that has us defaulting to negative programming in spite of how hard we try to do better, to think better. Our conscious mind is powerless to the subconscious mind until we learn to respect the programming begin to understand that by using the conscious mind and the higher conscious mind to respect the subconscious mind and to learn that the way to truly heal is to reprogram what has been. And just like going through 
cluttered sock drawer. These meditations are designed to help you declutter the subconscious mind. They are designed to slow your conscious mind down. They are designed to create clearer pathways to your true divine self. Dear one, your spirit is listening. Your spirit can hear you. Your spirit can hear these words. And through the calmness of mind, through calming the mind, the mental chatter, the higher self has the ability to help you organize a new way of thought. When the mind begins to understand what's wrong, it has the ability to think different thoughts. But what's wrong needs to be objectified. What's wrong needs to be understood and perceived from a higher level of awareness. These meditations are designed to increase your level of awareness. And as your level of awareness expands, so too do the channels between your subconscious mind, your conscious mind, and your higher mind. As your awareness of these problems expand, so too does your awareness of your divine self. Your divine self is not your programming, dear one. Dear one, your programming is not you. It's not you that needs to be fixed. You are divine. You are still that angelic, virgin being that was born so long ago. You are still that divine child of creator. You are still that innocent being regardless of what has been, and I mean regardless of what you have done, what you have thought, and what you have ever done or ever thought up until now. You are still that innocent, virgin, holy, divine being. only thing that separates you from merging and integrating with this divine being is the programming. Dear one, it is not your fault that you craved a connection to the beings you loved when you were young and powerless. You could have never known that the need to feel seen and connected to mother, to father, to family, to siblings, to peers, to teachers, co-workers, Lovers, spouses, children, you could have never known that your inability 
to connect to others was not a reflection of your unworthiness. Instead, this inability to feel connected to others was caused by the inability of those around us to connect to themselves and because those we loved and specifically our parents were unable to connect to themselves they failed to be able to connect to us and because they failed to connect to us we were unable to connect to our own divinity because we were never taught that we were enough we have been seeking a sense of validation our entire lives that's not our fault it is right to seek validation when you were a child because it is right to receive validation when you are a child a child is not wrong or bad for craving the validation of mother and father it is psychologically correct and proper to seek and to want and to need to receive validation and a sense of worthiness and a sense of belonging by mother and father it is never the child that is inappropriate our need to feel connected to others is not inappropriate we cannot change the past but we can change our perception of the past we can learn to understand and appreciate what went wrong we can learn and appreciate that we were always worthy that we were always enough even if our parents taught us to believe we were not we can learn to believe that in order to heal we must learn to believe that we are enough and when we learn to believe that we are enough we heal when we learn to believe we are enough we connect to the divine self when we learn to believe we are enough we connect to the divine self when we learn to believe we are enough we have found self when we learn to believe that we are enough we no longer seek validation from others because we have found the key to feeling validated on an innate level when we learn to believe we are enough we no longer crave attention 
from negative others. When we learn to believe that we are enough, we learn to believe we have nothing to defend. When we learn to believe we are enough, we learn to understand we have nothing to prove. When we learn to believe that we are enough, how other people see us becomes irrelevant. When we learn to believe that we are enough, how other people see us is irrelevant. When we learn to believe that who we are is enough, even when other people treat us like we are not enough, we know that it is their perception that is corrupt. We are enough. When we learn to believe that we are enough, we integrate. We soften. Our anxiety begins to wane. When we learn to believe we are enough, we begin to feel light in our bodies. When we learn to believe that we are enough, we begin to see the world in a whole new way. begin to believe that we are enough, anger begins to melt like butter on a hot stove. When we learn to believe that we are enough, we no longer care what others think of us. We are transparent. We are real. We say what we mean. We mean what we say. When we know we are enough, we fall in love with the divine self. We feel connected to the spirit world to the ethereal world, to the quantum world. When we learn to believe that we are enough, we understand that for so long we were asleep. When we learn to believe that we are enough, Life begins to manifest abundance. When we learn to love the self, we experience harmony within the self, within the mind, within the body, within every cell of our being. to love the self, we begin to experience harmony outside of the self. When we learn to see the self, appreciate the self, have compassion for the innocent virgin being. was brainwashed so long ago, it is then we begin to see others as they truly are. When we learn to believe that we are enough, we connect to the divine self and we know 
in every ounce of our being that we are enough. You are enough. I am enough. I was always enough. I am enough. I am enough. I was always enough. I will always be enough. I am enough. I am good enough. I am good. I was always good. Dear ones, if you have fallen asleep, you may stay asleep. If you wish to awaken from this deep meditation, you can do so now. I will count up to five. When you hear the number five, you will be awake. You will feel free. You will feel light in your body more integrated, more clear-minded. Milk the experience for as long as you can. Breathe slowly. One. Wiggle your feet. Two. Feel your legs. Wiggle your fingers. Four, become aware of the sounds around you. Five, open your eyes, dear one. Today is the first day of your new life. Namaste.